Welcome students to the online imperial course contemporary architecture and design. In the uh, previous class we uh, discussed the uh, phase 3 uh, where we have seen that tensile and uh, shell structure started flourishing and uh, it was uh, uh, and uh, their aesthetic uh, preference and the uh, uh, stylistic approach was uh, different uh, from the internationalist as well as the uh, monolithic movements. So uh, today we will discuss about uh, the other um, uh, um, architectural movement of uh, phase 3 modernism and uh, this is almost on the verge of uh, transferring from uh, uh, modernism to postmodernism so this is the uh, the uh, where the amalgamation between the modernism and postmodernism are happening and uh, these movements are after uh, uh, after the uh, world war 1 and world war 2 so uh, a lot of influences of uh, these movements were carry, uh, carried towards the postmodernist architecture as well architecture as well as the design so today we'll discuss uh, 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 architectural movement brutalism so this is uh, typically an architectural movement and uh, because this evolved from the material uh, preference of architecture uh, so it, this brut uh, brutalist movement was not seen in art and design because uh, we will see uh, where the how brutalism evolved and what is the concept of brutalism uh, so brutalism and metabolism um, uh, was two other uh, architectural movement that fl um, flourished at the end of uh, modernist era so if we look at the timeline uh, from pre-modern uh, so we have passed phase one where there were different uh, architectural styles and uh, which was um, uh, uh, which was uh, away from each other and before that we started with the two ab absolute opposite fall for um, uh, for the machine and against the machine uh, which uh, started uh, with the uh, one uh, started uh, with the uh, machine aesthetics and an another uh, started uh, with the uh, craftsmanship and the biomorphic design and then in the uh, uh, phase one there were different uh, movements in phase two there was one particular internationalist uh, movement and the continuum uh, of that which is monolithic uh, form and then we have seen a little uh, uh, more val uh, uh, preference was given to the aesthetics so uh, we have seen a tensile and shell so after that so these phase which is uh, phase three is also called late modern or the ultra modern where uh, uh, the Gugge architecture, ten, uh, tensile and shell was there and as well as uh, brutalism and metabolism. So these brutalism, metabolism, tensile, uh, tensile and shell transformed and uh, changed, um, uh, changed uh, their style and uh, percolated in the postmodern uh, movement. So we will uh, discuss about brutalism today. So this is a typical example of metabolism also uh, this all can also fall under brutalism. So brutalism and metabolism as we discuss um, we will see that uh, many of the architecture style which can fall under brutalism as well as in the meta uh, metabolism uh, movement. So uh, the architectural features of brut uh, brutalism this flourished between 1950s to 1970s also it can uh, it uh, was carried forward later in different form uh, of uh, neo brutalism or new brutalism and this uh, term uh, uh, is actually a uh, uh, came from a French term brut which means concrete. So brutalism uh, does not um, in many of the times it um, looks uh, visually very heavy and uh, sometimes it um, uh, sometimes people think that this uh, term came from brutal uh, aesthetics like uh, in uh, uh, art we have uh, uh, discussed fauvism so uh, which looks um, uh, it's not nothing to discuss uh, uh, it's not similar as uh, fauvist uh, movement or uh, uh, the brutal term is not the uh, etymological um, source so the, uh, the term brute means concrete so this uh, came from a material preference uh, th this architectural movement uh, was only uh, confined within the domain of architecture it did not go to uh, design and um, art because uh, concrete was the main um, texture and the material which was shown so the exposed concrete construction uh, was uh, the first uh, uh, was the uh, prime um, uh, stylistic feature of the brutalism uh, so british architect allison and peter uh, smithson started uh, designing with expo experimenting with uh, uh, this kind of structure then uh, the uh, term baton brute which uh, in french means raw concrete uh, which was used by lake obusier the famous uh, french architect who also have many examples uh, many 
of his uh, architectural design uh, which is uh, in India especially in uh, Chandigarh he have designed the Chandigarh's uh, uh, city plan as well as many of the important buildings of Chandigarh and uh, he described this material prefer uh, his material preference um, and he uh, he connoted the term baton brute and from there uh, the brutalist uh, brutalism this movement uh, 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 the word came from that so when we were discussing uh, the monolithic architectural style we uh, discussed uh, the metastasis form where we have discussed the uh, proportion lay modular which was um, uh, derived uh, which was uh, designed by uh, Le Corbusier and he have imp uh, implied that in many of the uh, many of his uh, design like Ronchamp Cathedral and other designs. So all these examples which we have discussed uh, in uh, other movements where the exposed concrete was the prime material uh, which was the uh, material preference of uh, Le Corbusier that can also fall under brutalism. So architecture is not just one movement ends and then other movements start so there can be a continuum and many of the examples can fall under uh, different um, other movement. So those uh, those examples which uh, you can place under a monolithic uh, style and also in uh, tensile and, uh, tensile and uh, shale we have discussed one of the Le Corbusier uh, uh, example where form and function both came together which is Roncham Cathedral which can also be uh, uh, connoted under brutalism because the exposed concrete um, was the main material of that building. Now uh, uh, there is another term from this it started with uh, the concrete so concrete uh, because of that the brutalist movement started but later uh, concrete got replaced with many other uh, uh, material so one was brick so uh, from there a brick brutalism movement started so many of the uh, um, cases we will see that exposed brick was used and no plaster no cladding was used so uh, the raw texture of the brick the original material and the texture of the brick will be visible in the building. So uh, that movement is called brick brutalism. So brutalism, uh, this uh, term although came from uh, concrete, but brick brutalism uh, use, uh, uses only brick, uh, special, uh, um, mostly brick as a uh, key prime material. So uh, brick brutalism is uh, that. And many of the cases we will see also brick sometimes can be replaced uh, by stone as well. So uh, all these movements which has the similar uh, look and other architectural features of brutalism which we will discuss uh, will be for, uh, falling under brutalism. And from brutalism there was a neo brutalist uh, movement started so where brutalist, uh, brutalist movement blended with metabolism. So we will discuss metabolism and then we will discuss the neo brutalist movements which will come after that. So other features of this uh, because uh, it started with concrete now it can also be brick now sometimes it can also be stone so what is the visual feature of brutalism so it is not it started with the material but it has a visual principle which uh, connotes the brutalist movement so uh, features uh, which derive from the pure material and the process of construction will be visible so uh, the pure material which uh, uh, can be concrete can also be brick and sometimes stone uh, which will be visible so this pure of material uh, this coming uh, this is coming from this internationalist movement where we have seen that pure color and pure material was very important so here uh, they are not using the color but the material preference uh, was uh, very important and showing the pure material was one of the key um, uh, characteristics and the process of construction so all this um, um, columns beams and everything will be visible and we'll see how um, they have um, shown the process of construction and this everything which will be visible from outside. So this is also visually heavy structure. So in internationalist movement there was a tendency to uh, make the architectural uh, uh, the structure um, uh, visually light for that we have seen that it uh, um, was elevated on pilotes sometimes elevated on a um, uh, hang over uh, overhang of a uh, platform which we have seen in uh, Francois house and um, uh, there was extensive use of glass which looks uh, visually light so uh, use of glass in brutalism was very minimal so if we look at the facade in uh, internationalist movement majority of this uh, facade from outside uh, uh, the elevation we will see glass which is a very lightweight material but in brutalism we will see 
that most of the ma uh, materials will be from outside the facade will be very visually heavy now uh, if this is uh, totally a glass curtain wall uh, so and uh, with uh, very light steel membranes so this uh, uh, building from outside the fenestration is heavier the uh, ratio of the fenestration of glass is much more than the uh, concrete and steel but here in the brutalism we will see the fenestration ratio of the fenestration will be very less so uh, that is absolutely opposite uh, to uh, to the internationalist movement where the fenestration or the uh, visual uh, percolation between inside uh, indoor and outdoor was much much higher and in uh, brutalism we will see the fenestration is very less and the concrete uh, concrete or the brick uh, wall will be very heavy and uh, uh, so uh, this architectural design looks uh, visually light and this looks visually heavy because concrete has a heavier material and this has uh, uh, the fenestration becomes much more opaque than transparent this was trans um, very transparent uh, that was the key features of uh, the internationalist movement and um, in monolithic uh, the it was um, it got di a little diluted because of the form so, so many of the times the forms were uh, made out of concrete shales and others and uh, in brutalism the transparency become uh, very less and so this um, uh, building looks very opaque in uh, nature and uh, visually heavy and also the overhang and um, uh, floating uh, um, elevated uh, uh, cantilevers were not there in this brutalist structure so this will be uh, much more uh, and the process of construction will be uh, so the uh, uh, the con uh, concrete uh, columns and beams will be visible from outside so that it looks very visually heavy and uh, the new brutalism uh, which uh, we will discuss uh, later uh, after uh, we discuss metabolism because it's a combination of metabolism and brutalism uh, this was um, uh, started in siam the Cong uh, congress international the architecture modern which was um, uh, there in the uh, which uh, happened in the uh, france so international congress to Mo uh, congress of modern architecture if we translate that in english uh, the new brutalism uh, uh, was evolved uh, what we were discussing so uh, the aesthetics of uh, the brutalist movements because the brutalist movement was based on the aesthetic of a particular uh, style so uh, there was a guideline of brutalism movement was aesthetics for example if we look at the guideline of uh, Bauhaus movement was functionalism so the building has to be functionally uh, very strong and then there was a few uh, a material preference few um, a stylistic preference like it has to be cuboidal and few um, a color preference that uh, only pure color has to be there but in case of brutalism it was purely aesthetic so aesthetically it should look heavy and aesthetically these are the materials which has to come uh, and then it will fall under brutalist movement so uh, the aesthetics of brutalism was taken from uh, brutalist movement and the ethics or the functional or the process of construction was taken from metabolism when we discuss metabolism then we will um, understand what is the ethics of uh, or the functional requirement of uh, metabolism how it uh, blended so the true material and true to design so the design principle was taken from the metabolism because metabolism was only based on the principle of design so the principle of design was taken from the metabolism and the aesthetics uh, the aesthetic stylistic uh, uh, guidelines were taken from the brutalism and then the new brutalist movement uh, started which uh, was again transformed into the many other postmodern movements so we will discuss when we discuss uh, the postmodernist movement uh, later on so if we look at this uh, uh, example of brutalist movement this is yale uh, school of art and design this is called rudolph hall because uh, this has been designed by paul Ru uh, rudolph this is in 1963 uh, when it got completed now uh, this example we will also discuss this in new brutalist movement because this uh, also has uh, the features of metabolism as well as brutalism uh, so this actually falls under new brutalist movement but this um, is an example of brutalist movement as well uh, so uh, 
from outside if we look at so this uh, building uh, is uh, made out of uh, concrete and uh, the concrete is visible from outside there's no plaster done uh, from the uh, uh, from the outside of the concrete so the uh, form work of the concrete uh, will be visible uh, the form work uh, is what we uh, if we uh, look at the construction process so uh, there can be steel from uh, form work there can be um, wooden form work so form work is outside skeleton and um, which uh, we have to design before uh, construction. So, if this is a form work of the steel form work and uh, the concrete will be poured within the void of this and then because the concrete is a semi liquid uh, this is a mixture of uh, different aggregates um, cement, um, sand and uh, stone chips so that's uh, that's a muddy mixture so uh, that will be poured within that and then this shuttering will be removed so that is the form work and uh, when there are many shutterings so if this is two uh, steel plate so when uh, you remove this and this concrete wall will have the uh, marks of the shutters uh, so if there are two uh, screws so uh, screw marks will be there and in between this uh, between these uh, two shutters there will be a small line thin narrow line of shuttering and it depends on what is the process of shuttering and different uh, types of shuttering uh, can give different kind of marks so if you look at a uh, uh, exposed concrete wall from outside the shutterings mark will be visible from outside and that becomes a uh, aesthetic um, St um, aesthetic uh, feature and that uh, was um, exposed and that was a stylistic uh, feature of the brutalist movement. So from outside if we look at so there's, uh, there will be a lot of marks of shuttering uh, uh, in, in the uh, brutalist uh, building and that is the stylistic feature. And uh, if you look at uh, the building, the building looks uh, very robust in uh, nature and uh, the, uh, as I was telling that uh, the amount of fenestration uh, versus the solid a concrete wall uh, was very uh, less uh, the amount of fenestration was very less and if you look at this this wall only has a little bit of fenestration over there and all over this wall is uh, a solid concrete wall and uh, even if you look at this uh, construction members were quite quite thick so these were not thin slender steel uh, members so these were thick uh, concrete members which also looks very opaque and visually strong and there were a lot of uh, elements added in that so which also gives a lot of um, uh, volume into the building and uh, uh, the uh, figure ground relation, uh, relationship or the play with the massing was created, uh, uh, was giving a very solid look. Now, if we look at the floor place, this is a seven story building and there was a lot of difference in the uh, floor level within that. But from outside, if you look, uh, so these are the service cores which uh, you can uh, see from outside uh, as well. So, there was service cores which is coming and which is uh, going uh, above the floor plate. So, this is the excess height of the service scores and these uh, services are again protruding out uh, which can be visible from outside and has a, um, a different existence which was not merged within the uh, built volume so this was coming out and these service scores are coming out of this um, building volume so these services and the treating the services in a, a different way is the style of metabolism which we will discuss that's why this comes under the new uh, brutalism where the ethics or the principles of design where the service core will have a visual emphasis was uh, the um, process of uh, doing metabolism that's why brutalism and metabolism sometimes they are blended with each other and then the new brutalism uh, many of the uh, examples of brutalism are uh, within the new brutalism now another example <coughs> of brutalist movement is uh, kuranashi uh, si uh, so Kurashiki uh, City Hall in Japan, which is uh, designed in 1960s uh, by Kenzo Tange, one of the uh, very famous uh, designer and architect of uh, uh, Japan. Now, uh, after the World War, uh, before World War, most of the movements and uh, architectural movements started in Europe and then came to USA but after World War we will see a lot of movements and uh, uh, 
uh, from brutalism and also we have uh, seen in shell structure and um, uh, and uh, tensile structure uh, Kenzo Tange's work. So uh, works were there um, uh, started happening all over the world and Japan was uh, in the shell structure and uh, uh, tensile structure was also there in the Japan uh, and Kenzo Tange have designed um, Olympic Stadium uh, using um, tensile structure. Now Japan started uh, Japan, uh, Japan um, has a lot of examples of brutalism and metabolism, this third phase uh, of modernist movement as well as the postmodern movements were also uh, predominantly happened in Japan and the Asian countries. So Kenzo Tange is one of the examples uh, in brutalism uh, is uh, Kura, uh, Kurashiki City Hall. If we look at uh, from outside, so it also has a very uh, robust um, uh, structure from outside, a lot of uh, grids are visible and thick um, platforms, uh, thick pillars are there. You can uh, think that this has a anti-gravity look but this, this is not because if you look at uh, the building mass, this does not uh, give a visually lightweight look. So this, this uh, is not uh, the concept of pilotis which was uh, given by uh, Le Corbusier in internationalist movement. Uh, because if you look at the amount of fenestration, the fenestration's uh, uh, area is quite low um, if you compare with the internationalist movement. From inside also the service cores are well delineated in these and uh, uh, the void and the service cores were uh, in the central and the, uh, uh, the space is, is around, uh, around the service core. Now another example of uh, brutalist, brutalist movement is uh, jo uh, Joan Miro Museum. Joan Miro was one of the famous uh, painter of modernist movement and if you, uh, if you want to uh, check his um, uh, paintings you can, you can see this. So this is abstract uh, paintings of um, uh, uh, pure ge geometric as well as the biomorphic lines and uh, very solid colors he used to uh, use. Now this is a uh, this is his museum design, uh, designed by uh, Joseph Sert in uh, which is um, there in the Barcelona. It's uh, in 1975. So this uh, started from 1950s, almost ended in 1970s, but also um, uh, went on because many of the architects uh, started ma uh, using a neo brutalist movement and then uh, changed the uh, style. Now. Uh, uh, this, these are the lines of the form work of the shuttering. So this, uh, there might have been a steel shuttering which ended over here. Then another shuttering. So there is another mark of the shuttering. So another shuttering could have been ended over here. So these are the marks uh, which comes. And the shuttering is not very smooth. Uh, so that's why the concrete structure is not smooth. It has a particular uh, texture which is a tactile texture. If you touch, so there will be a texture of uh, concrete. So it's not very smooth like plaster. So those are the textures. So you can see uh, a little um, 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 uh, grain, uh, concrete grain within that. So that becomes, uh, uh, that is the stylistic feature of concrete. So here also you can see the shuttering lines and the concrete's uh, texture all over the building. So this is also uh, an exposed uh, concrete work. And also if you look at the building volume, the fenestration level uh, was quite low and then uh, the, the building looks uh, quite ro uh, robust in the, uh, from the outside. So this is another example by Le Corbusier. Uh, this is mentioned jo uh, Joel House. This is a uh, this is uh, in uh, France. This is designed in 1956. Now here also you will see this uh, brutalism um, because this is a movement in third phase. So a lot of uh, uh, percolation of visual style was there from the previous architectural style. So this uh, uh, building has been uh, designed with a series of walls. So these are the walls which is supporting the roof and on top of that there was a fl flat roof uh, which was filled uh, in, the, in these areas of the vault and then uh, flat uh, flooring was designed on top of uh, the vault. Now from outside uh, this building uh, you can call it a, a brick, um, brick brutalist architecture as well because uh, from the vault also the brick uh, uh, is visible um, so it's, the vault is constructed uh, with the brick and from outside the uh, uh, facade also the brick is uh, visible but also there is a concrete uh, solid wall so there is a mixture of uh, concrete brutalism and the brick brutalism and also the brutalist uh, uh, style was also there so it has a solid uh, uh, has much solidity in uh, from outside 
uh, and uh, if you compare this with the Le Corbusier's Villa Savoy, Villa Savoy has a very um, uh, a Villa Savoy had a band window, and window has a, uh, um, had. Uh, an emphasis in the design, but here if you look at, so there is no band window, so this fenestration is not the protagonist of this architecture. So, uh, the material uh, of the solid material of brick and concrete is uh, visually much more uh, important than this band window which uh, you have designed in uh, Villa Savoy. Now, if we look uh, at the inside of this building, uh, you will see the emphasis of uh, uh, pure color. So, from outside this is emphasizing the pure material which is concrete and brick, from inside this is also emphasizing the pure color which uh, is uh, which uh, which started in uh, Bauhaus movement, but this is definitely not a Bauhaus building because a lot of elements are there. So there's a vault going on, series of uh, steps um, of uh, uh, solid and uh, void was there, and this is not a, a uh, pure cu uh, cuboidal um, building. So a lot of elements were added within the uh, building as well. Now uh, you can see this blue, yellow, and red color was um, is taking emphasis in this um, uh, uh, color palette of the uh, this interior as well as the green. Green is also used in many of the uh, cases, like uh, for example, Frank Lloyd Wright uh, used green uh, instead of blue in his uh, paintings and this um, uh, interior design. Now also, uh, um, Le Corbusier was a painter, and uh, these colors were dominant on this uh, his painting and the sculpture. And many of the other architectural example, when we we'll, uh, discuss, we'll see these are the colors uh, he used to uh, he uh, sometimes uh, used as an accentuation color with the uh, texture and material of this pure. Uh, brick um, and or concrete movements. So this is uh, another example. Uh, Marseille is in France um, uh, by Le Corbusier. In this building also, you'll see this uh, brutalist um, features. And the same features where they are very solid um, wall. And when um, uh, one way of making the wall uh, uh, look solid is uh, putting the punctuations or the uh, uh, or, or the fenestration in one particular um, area, and uh, then this could have been a uh, one single um, punctuation uh, of of uh, uh, glass. Then it will look the glass will look heavy. So if there is one in this building, if you put a fenestration like this, uh, it will the fenestration will have a lot of importance. Now if you treat the fenestration in a different way. For example, if you break the fenestration, but if you don't, uh, without reducing the area of the fenestration, then uh, the fenestration will not look very heavy because here it is a one solid uh, rectangle, but here it is broken. Now, uh, if you spread the fenestration all over, then also it will look there's fenestration all over. Uh, the building, but if you just club the fenestration in one particular area and leave leave the rest of the area blank and all 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 of this area uh, becomes very solid then it will look very solid so this in this will uh, um, kind of treatment uh, this um, it will look there is a visual punctuation there's more visual uh, visual connection between inside and out so the, their uh, punctuations are scattered in every um, um, all over the facade, but in this case, the punctuations are only in a particular small place clustered together, and the rest of the uh, areas are left uh, blank. And this is a solid wall, so that's what he is doing. And there's a solid, uh, big solid wall, uh, so that's why this uh, uh, the texture of concrete is. Uh, uh, becoming a protagonist, so uh, which we have also seen in the Yale uh, Center and all over uh, the other examples. So there, here, uh, there is a lot of punctuation over here. If these punctuations were uh, taken from here and kept here, so this solidity of this uh, total mass will uh, will be diluted. Now, uh, in these cases also in John Miro's uh, center, this is the front elevation. From front elevation, we will not see much uh, fenestration. So, fenestrations because also uh, there is a museum. So, light uh, if the light comes from top and uh, reflects here and then uh, goes to the installation, 
so in if in the section if we look at uh, so the north light comes from uh, or the south light comes from here and then it becomes a diffused light and then if there is a um, art installation and people are seeing from here so then uh, there is a diffused light coming in the installation that is also the function requirement but from outside this looks very solid because of the positioning of this um, fenestration or the windows. Uh, so here as well, so we have seen this uh, and also uh, this fenestration could have been a solid band uh, window like thing, uh, but uh, he is breaking this uh, with lot of different members which is going from uh, passing from each other. So that's why this fenestration is uh, uh, looking visually less. So actually there is lot of uh, fenestration is there in this building, but uh, because of these members, so these fenestrations are uh, not becoming visually heavy. And also from the uh, bottom, it uh, there's uh, thick, solid uh, concrete um, columns and uh, um, uh, beams are um, gi uh, giving a visual weight in this uh, design. So um, uh, Lake Abushar have designed many buildings in uh, India as well. So especially uh, um, um, his works uh, um, are there in the uh, Chandigarh. So par uh, Parliament building in Chandigarh is designed by Lake Abushar, and uh, also this is a br uh, brutalist movement. And um, uh, in Lake Abushar's one of this uh, uh, style was this Bryce Solil or this uh, this um, uh, um, device which uh, cuts the uh, sun, uh, which. Uh, um, cuts the sun to come within the uh, building. So, this is an added uh, treatment of concrete, uh, concrete uh, uh, vertical and um, uh, horizontal members which also we have seen in this uh, example is used in Chandigarh because of the climatic conditions and uh, the inside building has to be protected from the sunlight. So, this kind of uh, elements were added on top of the uh, building as a visual element. So, in the front facade from this side, so we will see this uh, series of uh, long um, uh, 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 concrete uh, walls, uh, shear walls, uh, which is uh, holding this uh, uh, inverted vault like uh, structure, which is added on uh, before the building. So, building actually uh, stops over here. So, this part is added, and uh, this also dilutes the solidity of this thing because the, a lot of um, uh, this there is a rhythm and then um, solid and uh, void was there. So, this stops the sunlight to go inside the building, and this actually helps the building to merge with the uh, uh, nature. So, this there is a solid building and if you add these kind of members and there is a gradual transition from this inside to outside. And uh, if we look at the building from um, uh, in totality, so this uh, building also is like a cuboidal um, uh, concrete chunk and uh, if you uh, look at the members, other members which is coming out of this building was uh, very robust and solid in uh, uh, in uh, nature and uh, this is the uh, this is on top of the assembly hall and um, in plan we will see a stop uh, in on top of this so this uh, takes uh, takes the sunlight from outs outside and uh, so this this building though this does not have any um, outside connection from um, uh, from the um, uh, from from, uh, from the elevation side, uh, so it uh, takes light from the top, and uh, so this uh, room uh, becomes well lit from in the in the daytime. So uh, from this skylight, uh, this light comes uh, from top. But if you look at the uh, shape of this um, uh, skylight, it looks like a chimney, and which also uh, shows the progress of this um, area of Punjab, where uh, with the uh, industrial progress with the uh, of the uh, area of Punjab. Now this is another uh, building, high court building in the, the uh, uh, Ch Chandigarh capital complex uh, designed by Lake Abujer and here he have used this uh, three accentuation color uh, which uh, uh, which uh, focuses, which uh, which marks the entrance. So this is the entrance of the building, which is not in the center, in, but in the other side, uh, is um, uh, designed like that. So the emphasis is given uh, to the entrance like that. And again, uh, the same uh, Bryce Solil was added uh, here uh, in the in the uh, Chandi uh, in in his design. And if you look at this, uh, the, uh, this looks like a series of arches which have uh, taken from the. Uh, uh, Indian um, Mughal uh, architecture where we have we see the series of Mughal arches 
and uh, um, in, in uh, many um, forts and um, castles. Uh, so, this has been translated into a more modernized format and um, covered within the um, within a, a cuboidal chunk and uh, um, this onion shaped arches were uh, translated into a uh, semicircular uh, uh, frag uh, frag uh, fragment of semicircular arch uh, so that it becomes more modernized but uh, this looks that this creates as a uh, visual uh, um, um, connotation with the series of arches which uh, has been taken from the Indian uh, style. So, this um, uh, can be uh, uh, kept in another postmodern movement which is called critical regionalism uh, where the regionalist um, visuals and functions were taken within the um, architectural uh, form. So, which was opposite to the internationalist movement where there was no contextual connection uh, of the building. Uh, so, this is the uh, so the same Bryce Solid which is added on top of the fenestration. So, actually the fenestration has a lot of uh, glass works, but uh, when uh, this concrete uh, solid uh, uh, chunks were added on top of this um, uh, fenestration, it looks more visually robust. So, this is the um, uh, view from the inside. So, here this uh, thick uh, shear walls, concrete shear walls were added, uh, also uh, it gives a visual uh, weight in this uh, building and there was a lot of uh, uh, big concrete uh, columns which uh, takes the weight of this uh, uh, um, huge cantilever is uh, creating a visual uh, weight. And here also this uh, huge cantilever is not uh, creating anti-gravity weight uh, uh, look uh, because this might be a, a cantilever, but this thickness of this cantilever is uh, not what uh, internationalist movement were there. So, in internationalist movement there will be there will be very thin um, cantilever even in the Roby house uh, in prairie architecture style there was a very thin uh, cantilever um, will be there. So, that looks visually lightweight, but here uh, the cantilever is very thick and it looks visually heavy. So, another example of this uh, subcontinent is uh, uh, Louis Kahn's uh, uh, parliament building in Dhaka. So, if you look uh, from outside this Dhaka uh, building also has a, um, is a pure, uh, pure concrete brutalist uh, architecture style and uh, from within you can see the form works and also uh, there is a little uh, because of this uh, texture there was a texture added to it there was a um, it looks darker in color. So, uh, within that so there is this uh, uh, where there is no texture. So, this flat uh, works uh, looks lighter. So, there is a texture. So, this texture has a darker um, it appears uh, dark. So, from outside so this um, also has uh, can be uh, falled under the critical regionalist movement because uh, uh, Bangladesh has a uh, uh, the water is very important in the uh, Bangladesh uh, 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 context. So, the water was used in the in the building and then uh, this monument uh, looks like a castle within the water which uh, uh, has taken inspiration uh, from uh, of Bangladesh's um, um, uh, kingdoms which was there and um, in uh, the fortresses of Bangladesh. And also this has been modernized uh, with the uh, pure circular and triangular and uh, 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 rectangular fenestration. From uh, within this uh, there is a, a wall which is added on uh, before the uh, building. So, the building uh, most of the functional um, uh, elements of the buildings were confined within this space, but there was another free wall which is added on um, before this uh, building. So, you, you can see though there is this, this building functions were going on on that facade, but another facade is added on top of it and which gives a very uh, strong uh, solidity in the in uh, from out um, from the outside of this building. So this uh, uh, also because of this bilateral symmetry and this uh, uh, robust look, this also gives a visually heavy um, uh, uh, visual heaviness in the uh, building. So, this is the inside of this parliament building of Dhaka and uh, this is the skylight on top of this uh, assembly hall of this uh, parliament building. So, if you look at this assembly hall, so these are the uh, this uh, the form work of this assembly hall, uh, you can see lot of uh, 
lines which is coming out uh, uh, co uh, which which is visible from here so this from a uh, form work has been done with bamboo uh, so these are the marks uh, of the bamboo so the the series of bamboos were added as the bottom uh, base of the uh, form work and because of this curvatures of the bamboo and on top of that the concrete uh, mixtures were poured so these lines of this bamboo lines were uh, retained so this also uh, has the bamboo texture was Im, uh, embedded within the um, uh, building uh, because bamboo was uh, um, predominantly bamboo has um, uh, is as a natural uh, vegetation which is there in uh, bangladesh and the northeast of uh, india so that also uh, creates a connection with the nature uh, within the buildings so, uh, which is also opposite to uh, internationalist movement so this can also be uh, placed within the postmodern movement uh, the precursor of this uh, postmodern movement of um, critical regionalism which we'll discuss where the regionalist elements will be added in the building but definitely this is a uh, brutalist movement uh, um, a building within the brutalist movement. So there are other uh, buildings in the parliament uh, complex. So where uh, he have used uh, the brick brutalist uh, uh, architecture style, but the similar architectural uh, principles were added. So from outside, there was another facade which is going on. Uh, many of the functions were happening within. So from outside facade, this looks very solid. Um, a chunk of uh, form which uh, uh, which has a very less uh, amount of fenestration um, uh, in uh, visible fenestration so here there's another uh, way of translating uh, the mughal arches into into the design so if you look at the arch so uh, this has been translated into the uh, the trabeated form which is uh, uh, because uh, because of the trabeated form looks more um, uh, modern because this is this is um, uh, square. So trabeated is where you put the beam and then uh, s uh, start constructing. So, uh, but on top of that, there's a slight um, uh, connotation of the arch. So this arch has been designed by brick uh, by la uh, layering these br uh, bricks on uh, af uh, after one an another, and this concrete member is taking the load of this arch and which is actually uh, joined. Uh, with each other. So, the same is happening with this. So, this is also gives the um, a connotation of the Mughal arches of um, the Indian subcontinent, which is also there in the interior. So, these are another um, uh, photographs of the same building. And so, here you can see, so uh, there was another wall added on top of the building to create this uh, uh, ge uh, geometric patterns and as well as the uh, solidity. So, you can see the other functions were happening where there was much more because of the need of this functions there was much more fenestration which was there within the building but because of this robust wall uh, the building looks much more visually heavy and robust so here also you can see this concrete brutalism and the brick brutalism together in this um, complex this is another example by Louis Icahn in uh, India, which is uh, IIM Ahmedabad, and um, he have used the similar uh, visual principle over there. But this is in uh, brick brutalist uh, style. So the similar way of uh, series of arches were uh, uh, there in a much uh, more modernized version. So these arches are, uh, in these cases, are absolute semicircle, and the series of arches are there, so which is also you can see the contextual co uh, connection between these um, arches, which uh, can be seen in Lucknow and uh, uh, Delhi or Agra, we, uh, where the series uh, you have to pass the series of arch uh, in a Mughal uh, or a Saracenic corridor. So, which gives a similar connotation of this Indian ancient architectural history and which has been translated in the modern uh, or postmodern movement so here also similar uh, concept has been added so this is this also gives a, a texture of the arch from outside but uh, covered with the brick and this arch is also there and the similar elements are uh, there so here also the same um, treatment has been uh, done which has uh, he have used in the uh, in Dhaka and also you, you can see this uh, uh, this wall which also works as a functional element as uh, this uh, cuts down the uh, sun because Ahmedabad is a hot, in, in a hot and dry area. Uh, so the sun is, uh, is uh, the am uh, amount of more sun uh, if uh, more um, uh, amount of sunlight comes within the um, 
uh, within the interior, so the climatic condition, with, um, uh, 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 the um, livable condition of the building will not be, uh, so, uh, w won't be suitable. So that's why this kind of uh, walls are added on top of it as a um, uh, as a functional element as well. And also, you can see the similar treatment are there. Now, this is an ex uh, extension of uh, IIM Ahmedabad, which is designed by uh, Bimal Patel, uh, the HCP construction, and where the similar, uh, uh, a few similarities has been taken from, uh, uh, the context has been taken from IIM Ahmedabad's, uh, the main campus uh, designed by Louis Icahn, uh, but this is designed in concrete brutalism, and here you can see the concrete uh, formwork is uh, visible and the screws uh, to hold the formwork. Uh, is also visible. And here uh, there's a mixture of concrete brutalism and the brick brutalism. And also there's a solid robust wall and fenestration was uh, corn, uh, put, uh, kept in the particular corner gives a uh, sol um, uh, adds to the more solidity of this building. Now, as I, I was telling, is uh, it might be uh, con uh, it mi might be concrete, it might be uh, brick, but it sometimes might be the nati uh, native material, might be something else. So this is I am uh, uh, Bangalore, designed by uh, Bibi Doshi, one of the famous architect of India. Uh, in Bangalore, this uh, stone was um, uh, very uh, is a locally available material. So using stone was much more um, economic, economic, and it also gives the uh, connects the uh, nature and the context uh, context with the building so instead of uh, this uh, brick or concrete he used uh, stone uh, to design the am uh, bangalore's uh, building but um, the style and approach of this uh, am bangalore's building was quite similar to the brutalism so this uh, here the brutalist movements uh, style and features has been translated with the uh, with a locally available material which is uh, stone of um, uh, from the local um, uh, stone quarry so from outside also it has a very uh, a robust look and uh, the similarity is uh, you can if you look at uh, there was a lot of similarity with the the, uh, uh, the brutalist uh, movement but the material was changed into the, into the stone so in the next class we will discuss metabolism and later uh, we will discuss what is the new brutalism and how in indian context uh, in indian context many of the famous architects uh, have used neo brutalism so in indian context how the, uh, the neo brutalist movement uh, uh, ma uh, has an impact thank you Thank you.